See, at the time of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 release, I pretty much gave up on the JRPG genre. I just didn't have time to sink countless of hours into a game like this anymore. And the genre itself became over flooded with generic copy and paste plots, which made the experience kind of bland for me. And that's why I kind of stuck with the fighting game genre throughout my college years, because they were quick play sessions to quench my gaming thirst. And I'm not gonna lie, I want to be honest with you, I was also going through my esports phase a little bit as well, and you know how that goes. But it all began to change after my brother Keel Lancer convinced me to go back and actually give Xenoblade Chronicles 2 a chance to prove itself. And ever since then, it's become one of my best JRPG experiences of this generation. And the rest is history, so if you really want to hear my thoughts on Xenoblade Chronicles 2, then I advise you to go check that out by clicking on the video card at the upper hand corner of this video. But, as I promised, we're going to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 expansion called Torn of the Golden Country and why this series competes or even surpasses some of my highly ranked JRPGs of all time. Torn of the Golden Country is an interesting case where a prequel of a game is actually good and dare I say even better than the game that came before it. But see, the problem with prequels is that in most cases, they aren't really well thought out. They feel more like an afterthought by the developers, a quick cash in on this fan base. So most of the time, prequels retcon and destroy narratives established in the game that came before it. I can say Torn of the Golden Country was able to nail a prequel game successfully without completely invalidating or destroying the foundation of the base game unlike some other JRPG series that I know. <coughs> Crisis Core. Right when I thought Xenoblade Chronicles 2 couldn't get any better, Nintendo had already announced and released its expansion. I said to myself that I was going to give me a, myself a break from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and move on to another JRPG in my backlog and then return um, later to Torna DLC to complete the series. But oh no, oh no, I couldn't help myself. I spent all night scouring YouTube, looking at Xenoblade content creator channels for theories, breakdowns of plot elements in the game, and how they borrow similarities to Xenogears and Xenosaga. I pretty much went on a Xeno binge for the entire month, but there was one plot element that kept bothering me the most, and that was the antagonist slash anti-hero, Jin, and his obsession with his woman in a crystallized slumber. See, in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Jin wanted to exact his revenge on Amalthus and the church for what they've done to Blades and most importantly, his driver named Laura. It's hinted in the base game that there may have also been some kind of intimacy between the two. Before her death, Jin had took a part of her and became what is called a flesh eater so that he wouldn't return to his core crystal in fear of losing memory of her and to also fight back against the ones responsible for taking her from him. His faith in humanity along with the relationship between Blades and Driver has also became muddled. But at the end of the game, Rex restored what was left of Jim's somewhat humanity and decided to give up his life to destroy Amalthus. The sad part is that after he died, also Laura's body went along with him. But it left me puzzled. Why did he keep her body in a crystal state? Was he planning on reviving her in some way? That was never really answered and I felt like a plot thread was leading somewhere with this but the trail just ended up going cold for some reason. They never went back to really explain that at all. So because I couldn't get enough of Xenoblade content, I decided that it was time to pretty much look into the Torn of DLC along with his trailer for the very first time. So after watching the trailer, I realized that Laura was in fact one of the main protagonists in this DLC story. So what I did was I found the last copy of Xenoblade at my local GameStop and after that my world just completely changed. So what I like most about the Torn of DLC is that Monolith Soft improved upon the foundation that was established in the base game of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. There was noticeable difference in its visual performance, quality of life, and much improved combat in my opinion. Even though the areas are smaller, the developers made sure to cram it with a ton of content, especially within the areas through quests, and plus traversing and able to organize quests was a lot easier in the game to manage, which was a needed quality of life change for this game, and hopefully they improve upon that as well in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. But the gameplay is where this expansion shines the most for me. So what's the difference about it? Despite me enjoying the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 combat system, there were some fans who felt that the combat was a bit overwhelming with so many mechanics being introduced and thrown at you throughout the entire game. 
but in Torna they made it a bit more streamlined which also allowed the game to feel a bit more fast paced. Now the combat still relies on a driver and blade system but done in a completely different twist. See in the base game of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 the blades aren't controllable nor do they fight they just assist the driver and occasionally use their weapons to land a blow on the enemy but in this game there are three drivers that has about two blades each. Yes, the game has less blades compared to the base game, but in this game, the blades are actually playable and act as individual characters, which is also pretty cool. But what's so cool about the combat system, you are able to swap your blades in and out of battle like a tag team versus style game. When swapping during an, an attack, you can also set up for specific situations where you can break or topple the enemy to create devastating damage on them. Now, the blades themselves can also be equipped with important stat boosting effects and equipment, which is also pretty cool. So these blades are characters themselves, and I really like that. So they are actual party members. Now, I spent countless of hours traversing the map just simply level grinding. I just love level grinding this game because I enjoy every bit of the combat system due to how addictive it is. Now, in this game, they also added a camping system, and this is where you can engage in cooking and relationship building between the, the party members. Now, I'm starting to notice that developers are realizing that they can get a lot out of the characters by implementing this kind of system in their JRPGs. You can also find it in games like Tales of Arise uh, that also added the, the camp system to where you're allowed to uh, pretty much interact with other party members and build relationships with them, pretty much the affinity system. Now, the only thing I don't like is that your story progression is locked behind the NPC questing system. You are required to do a set number of quests to boost up your rank and reputation among the people. Now, once you reach the required rank, then you can progress through the story. You cannot beat the game without reaching the required link. So here's what I suggest to you. I suggest that you pick up and find as many quests as possible as you're playing through the story. So by the time you reach the end of the game, you'll be able to progress seamlessly without being halted from moving forward throughout the game because you don't have to require rank now as far as the soundtrack is concerned come on i have to repeat myself monolith solve has always done a good good job when it comes to their soundtrack their soundtrack is amazing and it's no different with the torrent dlc in fact i think i love the the music even more in this game compared to the base game and the base game is really good so that's not the downplay what the base game had to offer this is just even better so especially the combat theme, I think the combat theme, I enjoyed the combat theme in this game more than I did Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the base game. Now the game can also be, be beaten um, in 15 to 20 hours if you decide to skip most of the game's content. And it can take up to around like I believe 30 hours to com complete if you're a completionist and you, by completing everything, it should take about 30 hours. And that's pretty hefty um, for an expansion in terms of content. And I think this is, this is a DLC that uh, Nintendo showed that yo like you if you do a DLC content right and expansion right you can get a lot lot out of it especially in terms of story elements and things that you can just do in it and I really appreciate it and it was well worth the price the gameplay is good and dandy but it's the story that will forever make me appreciate the series and what it has done for me and my return to the JRPG genre once again now see the story takes place 500 years before the events of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. These events were often hinted throughout the base game. More importantly, we finally have the opportunity to witness Mithra's original driver named Adam. He was always teased and but never revealed in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But now we finally have a, re or a face reveal of the original Aegis Blade Wielder. And I think it's pretty cool. Now, the funny thing is, he really isn't the main center focus protagonist at all. It's in fact Laura and Jim, which I have no issue with because these characters were the best among the cast. This is the origin story of the antagonist slash anti-hero Jim. When I say that Jim is one of my favorite JRPG villains of all time, I really mean it. He's a villain that you're sympathetic towards. You feel his pain and the conflict within him. He's not evil just for the sake of evil. He have a motive, and in this game, you will explore why he became the man slash blade that appears in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Also, other familiar faces make an appearance in this game as well. Uh, Marag's ancestor, Emperor Hugo, accompanies your party uh, alongside Bridget, who is also his blade, which I found pretty cool. So, let's just say this. The game also explains, this game specifically explains why the later emperors of Mora Ordain aren't allowed to wield their imperial blades 
handed down from generation to generation. And I'm going to just leave it at that. I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm going to leave it at that and finally go through the explanation of why that's the case. And Mithra is also a bit more of an upbeat person compared to her later counterpart. And this game explores the reason why. And I'll tell you one thing. It's devastating. I'll just say that. Now, the pacing and the dialogue and interactions between these cast of characters were really well done and fleshed out. And you felt for each of their motivations, especially Laura, who have experienced so much loss growing up as a child. And once she had awakened Jen and became his driver, Jen has always been by her side ever since. And the connection between the two throughout this expansion was heartwarming. And what made the experience even more deep is the fact is that you will know that Laura would not make it out by the end of the story alive. She wanted to someday open up an orphanage for children like her and start a family of her own with Jen. Jen, a man who is also just a blade, a blade who also understood what comes after losing their driver, knowing that someday he will lose memory of his past life and will eventually be claimed by a new driver and will forget his previous driver. But because of his strong connection and somewhat love for, or for Laura, he begins to second guess the process of being a blade. Forgetting someone he cherished the most is like dying in a sense, and that was something he just did not want to experience. He learned from Bridget to keep journals, which allows him to log in his memories and preparation for the day that he may end up losing Laura. And when that day finally came, he took it upon himself to make sure that his memories of her will last forever. You don't understand how much the story hit me by the time the credits appeared on the screen. This game was no happy ending for any of the cast members of this game. I won't spoil it. This is also the reason why Pyra was recreated to begin with. And I'll just leave it at that. But overall, the Torner DLC was just one hell of an experience. But I would say this was the RPG, the first RPG that actually made me shed a tear by the end of the game. I literally cried by the end because of how well they've written the characters. They attach you to the characters. You grew an attachment to the characters only for you to find out that nothing would end well for these characters at all. That there was a bad ending waiting by the time you made it to the end of the game. And it was truly, truly sad. And I will always remember that. And it made me appreciate the character Jen even more. He's just a great character, well-designed villain. And I just respect every aspect of the character and just the game in general. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I'm going to say it again. It's one of my favorite JRPGs of this generation. One of my favorite JRPGs of all time. And I'm looking forward to see what they have to deliver with the upcoming Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And how they put all this together. And how will Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the events, will affect Xenoblade Chronicles 3? Will we see any flashbacks? Will we see any of these characters return in some shape or form? That's what I'm super excited about. But that pretty much wraps up this video. I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comment sections below. How do you feel about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the Golden Country of Torner expansion pack? What do you think about the characters, the combat system? Is it one of your favorite GRPGs of all time? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. Are you looking forward to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 as well? Also let me know about that as well. So hit that subscribe button or like. Definitely help you out in the algorithm. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified for more JRPG news and just gaming news in general. And um, this is Moogan Lord. See you game fiends later. Peace out.